HVAC with Stephen Rarden is sponsored by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. TrueTechTools.com. What's up, YouTube? It is the evening of September 28th. And i uh, got a friend that texted the wife and said that upstairs was 89 degrees and that they think maybe the heat's actually running rather than the air conditioning since it is so warm upstairs. They've got two separate systems and uh, the upstairs is the one that, uh, how do I put it nicely, is hacked together. So, we're gonna go over there and see what we come up with and try to take you guys with us. We've got a cold and sweating suction line. We don't have any ice on the coil. So that's good. We'll see if there's Potentially a amp draw on the electric heat, maybe. Three amps of blower, which is not bad, not unexpected anyway. I'm gonna grab my thermal camera and see if that breaker's warming up. That one was really kind of odd. The customer stated that the system was actually blowing warm air and that it smelled warm as well. So it's kind of concerning in a way but the only thing that I could say definitively was that there was a little bit of a refrigerant charge issue and what appears to be a restriction in the uh, refrigerant circuit. It's probably a combination of both. As you see with the screenshots, we started out with a 17 degree subcool and a high superheat I think it was like 34 and when we ended it was a little higher subcooling quite a bit higher subcooling and still elevated superheat to where I think we are just going to be getting the suction pressure up a little bit the coil was basically clean there was a clean filter in it now but it's just a little disturbing to see those kinds of refrigerant pressures. So what we're going to do, considering the overall condition of the system with its hacked together hodgepodge, is uh, let it ride. Let it ride as it is for now and uh, look to replace it when the time comes. Other than that, I don't think I'm going to get anything this evening. And if I do, I will hit record. Thanks for watching. 
I had a customer that had booked for Saturday, September 30, and they just called a few minutes ago saying that they were available if I wanted to knock it out this evening instead of having to come out on tomorrow morning. So we're going to go ahead over there. It is raining again, so we're going to be focusing on the heat side of the system once again and we'll hope the rain holds off for now so we've got a 90,000 BTU furnace with a four ton drive and three and a half ton AC unit we've got the capacitor marked here as a seven and a half microfarad and then we've got the burners we need to pull out so we're going to kill power and pull the burners when we pull the burners we'll go ahead and check the heat exchanger see what that looks like I had been here before for a cooling check probably over a year ago now so I hadn't looked at the furnace yet igniter's got a little bit of collection on it but it doesn't look too bad we'll check the resistance here we've got 54 ohms which is pretty decent considering this type of igniter the igni or flame sensor it's got some collection on it it looks kind of crusty pretty standard to hit that with a soft bristle wire brush you can also use some emery cloth but um, I prefer the brush doesn't have any silicone to embed the grit so you, you end up cleaning it rather than adding junk to it the burners don't look bad but we're gonna hit them with the wire brush to knock off any collection there and we're gonna give the heat exchanger a bit of a visual from this end usually if the heat exchanger looks crappy from the burner end we'll dig deeper but if it looks okay from the burner end we'll uh, let it ride it doesn't look too bad the carrier at 58 STA furnace is pretty user or serviceably friendly with the way that the burners slide out and uh, everything's able to be accessible for the most part Orphis manifold goes in and out pretty nicely also unlike a Lennox furnace which can be a real joy to get into so I believe the Flame sensor disconnected for now. Turn the gas off and get set up to check incoming and outgoing exhaust or gas pressure. That is the danger of pulling your gas plugs in an attic, trying to lose them. To check my gas pressure, I run two Testo 510i manometers and I got two hoses that are the same length with the short connector on the threaded nipple I've considered buying colored hoses from iManifold to make it easy to differentiate which hose goes to which connection I've got my 510 eyes 
labeled with tape. So my incoming pressure goes for the red tape, which is a higher pressure. And my outlet pressure goes for the blue tape, which is a lower pressure. One thing I almost forgot to do was zero the manometers. So we'll bring up the Testo Smart Probes app. That way we can look at both manometers at the same time. They automatically connect since I've had them connected before. And I just have to hit the gear menu on the bottom left. Zero pressure sensor and continue. And that'll zero them out. Then we'll connect them and turn the gas back on. How you doing up there? I'm alive! Haven't fallen through the rafters, so I guess that's a good thing. Yep. Before we fire up the unit, I'm gonna get my DL429 meter on the flame sensor. So that I can check all these readings at the same time. And then I can find it. I've got my uh, Supco door switch holder. It's got a couple of magnets and makes holding down the door switch pretty simple so you don't have to tape it up. So we're going to drop that. We got blower started. While the blower's running, we're going to check the capacitor. We got 0.8 amps and 312 volts. So we'll go to our calculator. 2652 times 0.8 divided by 312 gives us 6.8 microfarad for the blower motor. So for clocking the meter, we're using the half-foot dial. And there is a quick test in the iManifold application that allows you to input your gas heat content. And in this instance, we're using 1025. And we're going to start the timer at the bottom of the dial. And start. And stop at the bottom. We've got 75,988 BTUs. We're going to do it again just to get an average. So we'll reset, start, and stop. That one came out a little bit better at 89,000. 589 we're going to measure temperature rise and as an 80 percent furnace we get a 71,000 output right now we're getting just under 1600 CFM if we let it balance out for a little bit and level out that temperature split it may come down some 1585 we've got a three and a half ton AC unit so we're gonna leave it at 1582 submit to user inputs gives us a 45 degree temperature split and the green check mark means that the temperature is balanced I think we've warmed the house up plenty pull the control wires and let it cool itself down here Oh, better put my eyeballs on before I try to drive down the road and I can't see anything. Realistically, there isn't much to a heat check unless you find problems with it. And I probably won't continue to record every single thing that I get into. But since I'd been away from recording for so long, I figured I'd 
at least start catching most of this stuff even if it is the most mundane but tonight we're headed over to uh, I'm not sure where the is it PNC arena where the hurricanes play the wife won tickets in a raffle to uh, go see the hurricanes tonight so we're headed over there I'm gonna run home and clean up and we'll be headed out at about seven o'clock this evening thanks for watching like subscribe comment and share and you can use coupon code R-A-R-D-O-N to save seven percent on your purchase at truetechtools.com peace out